How are you, Lenny? I'm good. I'm good great. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Now, this is a studio we were in about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. Okay. Which used to belong to Mr. Simon Firth. That's right, Simon, yeah. And when you gave me the address, yeah. I came around the front and I didn't realize it was his studio, old studio, yeah. until I came around the back. He, yeah, no one uses the front. <laughs> yeah, no. It didn't even have an address on it. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting mail for a while. And I walked out front and I was like, oh, there's no address and there's no mailbox. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you have so a mailbox now. We I got saw it. it. Yeah, yeah. No, we're good now. Yeah. So this is a, a beautiful place. You, Thank you. How, yeah. When did you take it over? May, yeah, just about a year ago, in May of 2017. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really, it's fun. It's uh, I moved all my stuff in, and I feel, I already feel right at home. You know, I mean, to be honest, it, it it's very you. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a sort of I get of, that sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah. Just, I, you know, for for me, yeah. there's a sort of a 70s aesthetic that really works. I like, yeah. I like this whole feel. It's yeah. just gorgeous. Well, it's a, you know, it's a room that uh, allows for the way I like to work, which is analog with digital hybrid, all that. Mm -hmm. And it's also a place you can grow in. It's a place that like, as uh, you know, you can, it, it's malleable. There's like a lot going on. Absolutely. You're not, you know, it's a lot of, you know, yeah. And as we'll see in the video, you've got like lounge areas, you've got rooms all over the place where yeah. you can place amps, Yeah. multiple rooms out there. I mean, it's just a lot, you could get, you know, 12 people playing. Oh yeah, Ab absolutely. Yeah, we had, a, I had a great band in here not too long ago and everyone was in that room. Tracked it all to tape. It was about six players, and it's just, it's so fun. It's a great room. It's a great studio. It sounds really good, you know. It's its one of those studios where you're not trying to make something sound good. It's easy to make it sound good. So instead, you get to decide how you want it to sound. Beautiful. You know, that's, to me, that's really special. Yeah, yeah. What have you been working on recently? Oh, boy. Let's see. Um, well, I'm working, today we're going through this track with Avid Dancer, which is a uh, project I'm producing, an uh, artist named Jacob, is the, he's the lead singer, he's out of LA here. Um, I just started working with uh, an artist named Jordan, who goes by this, uh, his band is Rain Wolf, which is really cool music, really just distorted, aggressive, you know. And I've been, I uh, just started producing hip hop, so I've been producing an artist named Alec King. Which I is, heard that, by yeah, it's amazing. It's really fun, yeah, really it's good. really good stuff. Uh, and I've been, uh, and these are all things I'm finishing up that hopefully will be out by summer. Uh, been producing an artist, Rachel Goodrich, which, uh, sh you know, should be getting mastered in the next week or two. And we've started another couple songs. Um, Who was the girl you were playing, the other girl you were playing? It was amazing. Oh, yeah, that's a girl. Her name's uh, Madison Ward. Yeah, her amazing singer. Yeah, I did, did a track with her and she... Uh, I'm, you know, hoping to dive into working on her first EP uh, and a few of the songs, at least, you know, she's an incredible singer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got some great players on that song, too. Um, boy, there's more, but that's about as much. <laughs> I've been in the, I've been that's in the middle of about seven records or so. It's good. You know, the studio, it's, uh, I welcome it. You know, I love being here. This is a very, very open feel. You've, yeah. it, it feels, um, well, because when I came here with Simon, of course, he had like drums, like crazy. We had <laughs> his um, one drum kit that took up half the room. It took up half yeah. the room. I love yeah. that kit though. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But it has a very warm, welcoming feel. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm glad. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, well, I want people to feel comfortable. You know, I want people to come here and uh let the world fall away mm -hmm. you know and then you come here and you lose track of time and you feel creative and safe you right. know um because that's what it's about it's a it's a it's a it's about trust and it's about letting you know creativity is such a subjective thing mm -hmm. that it um it's so delicate and so to have an environment where people feel that freedom then you're going to get the best out of them and out of yourself you know i think what for me having been here now for a, a few hours is i feel like you've, you've got this aesthetic which is very you know warm and analog feeling but yeah. at the same time you're like using really cutting edge stuff even down to oh, like yeah. controlling the lighting oh, and yeah. stuff like that <laughs> yeah it, that's that's kind of what we want isn't it we want the human yeah. touch you want the right. organic feeling but we want we want it to be up to yeah light. well you know I had been blessed to be able to work in some of the nice studios in LA. Uh, I had a, uh, you know, I had a room at United Recording for three years. I had the mastering room across from Studio B, which I turned into my production room with my Trident console before I owned this console. 
And I kept finding at that time in my life that I was renting the studios, you know, around town to go, which is great. I mean, those are legendary rooms and I love that, but that's very, can be very expensive, especially in today's market of music. But so my goal was to build a studio or acquire a studio or move into a studio, whatever you want to say, um, that allowed that level of professionalism, but was also homey and was also some place that someone felt like they could lay down on the couch while I'm working and just feel comfortable and but still you know have the the the, the work the the level of professionalism in the work so you know I do what I could and I you know bought found my API and that was kind of the beginning of it the API started the movement towards like you know, picking, hand picking my pieces of gear, you know, and I, I feel really grateful and really excited about what I've been doing here. You know, it's really, I keep impressing myself, which is fun. You know, it's a fun feeling, you know. I like it being built around this API. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the API almost is, feels like it was built, or the room was built for it. Yeah. It goes exactly from the edges of the wood. Yeah. It's perfectly fit, you know, so it's, it's gorgeous. A, yeah. Yeah, it was painted. It was painted white, and I think '86 by Brent Averill, is from what I understand. Uh, it was. Uh, it's been around. It was at High Street Recording in San Francisco for many years. It oh, was, in High Street. Yeah, it was at High Street. It was black then, um, and then it had been down here in LA. It was in. Uh, it was in uh, a couple home studios. In fact, I have this picture of it being craned out of a house in Laurel Canyon and it's like over the house, you know, and it's like, it's crazy. It was not hard. wonderful. Yeah, it was hard to get in here actually because it's 1300 pounds and uh, it's too wide for the door and you can't lay it on its back and like take the legs off or something like, so it, I didn't know what I, I thought I was going to have to cut a hole in the wall and both of these walls are full of sand. So that would have been a disaster. Um, and <laughs> But I was when I was when I was getting it ready to move, I noticed a hinge that goes all the way across the back of the console. And then I started looking into it a little bit more, and I noticed that all of the circuitry terminated to the hinge, like to the back of the hinge. The only thing that didn't was the the cabling, the harnessing for the TT patch bay, which is aftermarket because it was originally a TRS patch bay. So I noticed under here, there's about four screws, four rack screws. That's it. I took them out and I had a buddy of mine and we lifted it and it opens the same way a school desk like this opens. Oh, wow. And so I took out the patch bay and took all the harnessing out, which was not something I ever want to do again, you know, <laughs> and lifted it and it and it opens this desk opens up and so then we took the measurements and put it all into the CAD software and figured out if we lifted it to a certain angle we could just barely get it through the door and uh it was amazing we did it we didn't you know it was, it was incredible that it worked and uh you know it didn't really suffer any damage um and it was a, an amazing story. I have a cool video of it. Yeah. So it uh, it was quite a feat to get this in here. I don't think I'll move it again. You know? <laughs> you know? Well, you bought the building. Uh, yeah. So. so it's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a great spot. You know, it's a, I mean, I just love being here. You know, a big part of my mix process has always been to have alternate speakers in my live room. Nice. Uh, so uh, these are ATC 100s, which are incredible, mo like second monitors, you know, yeah. uh, which is cool because when I'm mixing in my main room with my my man, my Manly Tannoys, my Hot Houses, or my Yuris, once I start to get to a point where I'm kind of like probably just getting tired, you know, mm -hmm. and I start, then I come in here and it's a completely new environment. You right. know, it's totally, it's not necessarily a mixed room. This is my live room. Um, but you know they're atcs they they give you a great you know great representation of what's going on and they're gorgeous yeah. looking yeah there's very pretty speakers yeah it reminds me of being a kid yeah you know back in the old 70s hi-fis oh yeah huge, huge yeah i have some of those like i've got actually a few pairs of those in storage like 
the pan what is it, like some the Sony made one like you a, a know. wire. Remember, I don't know yeah. how you pronounce it in America. Yeah, yeah, they were like yeah. multiple speakers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those. Yeah, I actually this is if you like guitars, I also have my. This is a really beautiful guitar. Uh, this is a 1971 uh, D41 that I picked up. It was owned by a guitar collector. And all of his guitars were sold off when he died. And then when they sold his house, this was under the bed. And they had oh, wow. missed it. And it's <laughs> never been played at a live show, even. Gorgeous. Beautiful sound, huh? Love it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's I mean I need to get it set up a bit. And this was in seventy one it was before there were truss rods. So um, oh, wow. it's uh it, in order to actually have it worked on you it has to be taken apart. Um, oh really? That's crazy. Uh, and but it's interesting because during that from what I understand, I'm by no means like a guitar expert, but from what I understand at this time, the makers of the D41 were the same as the D45 makers, which I guess that makes sense, right? So really the only big difference from what I know is the pearl inlay, the mother of pearl inlay. So, you know, um, I, I love guitars, but I yeah. don't know anything about Martins yeah. except when they're good. Yeah, this one's aged really nice. I'm not big on new strings either, so it's kind of, I like... I like having duller strings and then opening it up in the mix, you know. I agree. I think with acoustics, if yeah. you want that super pop sound, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there's other, That's when you there's other, I have other Martins, too, that have that. Yeah. And then, you know, here's my, uh, this my Hammond, my, my B3 here that was given to me by Dave Mason. Um, 64 Hammond, which is really, it's a beautiful, beautiful Hammond. Uh, sounds incredible. Wish I played it. But I don't play. Oh, you, you know, don't play keys? I don't play keys, yeah. Right. I mean, you know, I, to me, key, uh, uh, organ player is a different, a totally different beast of, uh, you know, that's, that's a unique thing. To have a real organ player come knows in how to and use knows the how bars. to use it. Yeah. That's a different thing. It's a special thing. Well, yeah, was... this live room is really interesting. It, uh, the studio was built by Bobby Summerfield, and uh, it was owned by Sheila E., Prince's drummer, for many years, and her father painted this painting oh, and right. when uh when she owned the studio the studio and this is all i've been told you know through word of mouth so maybe some of this i've gotten slightly wrong but it says blue 52 up here um, yeah which uh is yes a football term but uh it's also from what i understand the name of a whale and there's a whale that exists that they've only ever heard and mm -hmm. no one's ever seen it. And it's named Blue 52, I think. I hope that I've, that's this is, you, you know. know what, whether it's true or not, I like the story. So it's then, pretty cool. Yeah, they named it Blue 52. So, it's fantastic. Um, this, so when she had this studio, this booth was in here, which is a very useful booth. Uh, ends up being for a lot of amps, things like that. You know, throw a lot of, right now, guitars, all sorts of stuff in there. Um, I put a Wurlitzer player in here the other day. Uh, and then when Simon Phillips, drummer uh, from Toto, yeah. he installed this booth. And this booth is just incredible. In fact, lately I've been tracking drums in here. And it's just that cool, tight 70s drum sound, you know, instantly. In fact, it's really a cool room. Um, uh, I know Simon used to put his grand piano in here too. Uh, nice visibility. Uh, and uh, it's a really, this room's so useful. Really, really useful. I like the idea of doing a small kit in here and having oh, it yeah. super dead, yeah. Well, and the ceilings are high. In fact, the ceiling in this room and in the live room here, the ceiling, it's a false ceiling. It goes up, you know, another, about another three feet. So you yeah. actually have pretty high ceilings in here. And it's an interesting room because this side of the room, is there's absorption. And then as you move this way, it becomes this irregular pine wall. So uh, you can even hear it in your voice as you move. It gets, the sound gets more scattered and intense over here. Yep. Great for room mics, um, but it's, it makes it really versatile. In fact, when I'm tracking my piano, I pull the piano out to the edge right here. And then the sound kind of spills out into the room. And yep. I've actually recorded the piano with a mic like back here 
you know, because of the way the room resonates. It's right. really beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful, very versatile room. There's a lot you can do. And this is Yamaha, is it? A Kauai, actually. Oh, it's a Kauai, nice. It's a, it's a, it actually tracks incredibly well. I know when I track it, I, I take everything off. Take everything off, yeah, great. And then it opens it up. Beautiful. Um, and so then, here's the, we're going to the control room here. Can I have a quick stop at this? What do you got? What's this here? Yeah, you know, this was a piano, a gift. Uh, it's not going to stay. It was, unfortunately, it was stored on its side. Uh, and oh, it, it, was? it got damaged. This whole area here got damaged. It's not even really in tune. It sounds cool, though, but. Oh, I like it. Yeah. It's got yeah. When it got stored, it was stored on its side, and the lower red, the lower octaves there got off kilter, and and to have it repaired would just cost a lot of money. Oh, and uh, you know, a shame. well, what I'm gonna do is, uh, you know, the string length in this is very similar to the string length of the upright. Right. So I'm thinking about getting a grand, you know, add another yep. foot and a half. Why not? It's already taken up the real estate, and then we'll have the grand in here. Beautiful. Um, so then we'll go into the control room here. The control room's really interesting. Um, I've got a, I can show you guys. This is my 1972 API. Uh, Which is gorgeous. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's 40 channels. So, and it's the only time API, from what I understand, made a 40 channel desk. They made three of these, two of them from, Again, what I understand, they've been de decommissioned. Uh, so this is a one-of-a-kind console. Uh, it has 512 pre's in every channel. Um, and some of them have Jensen transformers and some have API transformers. Uh, and I have my notes, so I know which one is what, so I can, uh, I can patch in accordingly. Um, it's great to track through, great to mix through. Uh, it has something unique, which are 954 EQs, which is actually a sweepable three-band EQ. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't uh, know those. Yeah, they're they're not very common. Um, they're cool. Uh, they they work quite well. I mean, they sound great. I love them. They sound great. I love tracking with them. So it's fully sweepable from eight hundred hertz to sixteen k yeah. on the top. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen these before. Yeah, they're much like the five five four, um, but this one was actually writable. Early like automation of some really? sort. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Uh, Do you use the automation on it? I don't. No, yeah. they. It's from what everyone tells me. It's don't even go down that road. It would be a little problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, we've got my sixteen channel Neve, uh, which is an original Neve desk uh, with BAE modules in it. Uh, it's really great. I love having this. I have this terminated up to the patch bay. Uh, I can use it for pre's, I can use it as inserts for EQs. Lately I've started comparing summing through this versus summing through the API if I'm doing, you know. It's so to have both in one room is definitely a luxury I'm very grateful for, you yeah. know, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I've got, uh, you know, I've, I use uh, hot houses. For... I don't know anything about these. When I first came in I was like, yeah, so Let's these are interesting this. speakers. Um, I have these running off of a Channel Islands Audio um, uh, amp, which is out of here, out of Venture, out of Oxnard area. Yeah. Uh, this speaker is a speaker that I got used to when I was working for Ross Hogarth. Hmm. So Ross uses these. So when I was with him, I go to the studio. I got very used to them. So when it came time to buy something. Uh, which was years ago when I was working with Edward Sharp in the Magnetic Zeros up in Ojai, I needed a speaker that I knew. And so since I had worked with Ross pretty much ex exclusively for about five years or four years, five years, so I bought these. And it's out of New a guy out of New York, he builds them to order. So mm -hmm. you build, you want them, he'll build it for you. you know? Oh, that's great. Uh, and then I'm running uh, Manly, uh, the ML10s, which I love these speakers. Um, These are essentially the little gold. Yes, the Tannoy. The yeah. Tannoys, yeah. Um, and uh, so Manly builds the cabinet with the Mastering Lab crossover in it, uh, and then you have to get the driver. It doesn't come with the driver, so it took me about six months or so to find 
someone with a driver and then have them installed but they just sound great i have these running off of a bryston amp and they just sound beautiful um and then a recent addition to the studio are the Yuri 813s with an 838 crossover. Um, I bought them, they were totally demolished, and then I had them uh, rebuilt by Chris at CK Speakers. In fact, he built these too. Uh, he put the drivers, got the drivers and reconed them for me. Um, he did a great job rebuilding them and uh, put them up in the soffits, running them off a of Macintosh amp, and they just sing. They're so cool. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and we, uh, we've we got some cool outboard gear here. You've got a here. lot of really nice outboard here. Yeah, Why don't we start with the, the new acquisition? Well, yeah, we've got the Unfairchild 2, which is uh, right now I'm demoing from Eric, which I don't want to let go. Uh, <laughs> it's Eric will be pleased to hear that. Yeah, it's incredible. It's uh, it's. I've only had it for a few days, but it's already changing my workflow. So it's really cool. It's a, you know, um, it sounds great. Whether it sounds just like a Fairchild or not, I don't know, because I don't have a Fairchild here. Like I can think from memory of, from using one, and it's definitely like in my memory reminiscent. So that's cool. But what I like most about this unit is the ability to have attack and release, the ability to have side chain. Uh, you know, there's a couple other ways that you can use this unit that you can't use a Fairchild that is very interesting when it comes to uh, when it comes to mixing, especially on your stereo bus, you know. Um, and then we've got a slew of manly gear, uh, which is great. It's uh, most of that's just uh, I mean, I use the very move almost uh, always on stereo buses uh, as well. Um, the new Moo is kind of an updated version of... I don't uh, know this. Yeah, this is a new unit for her. Um, yep. It's uh, basically a cleaner version of the Very Moo, is what oh. it is. Um, so if you like using the Very Moo, but you want something that's not quite as saturating or not quite like something that's a little just cleaner, kind of the way music's a little cleaner these days. You don't mm -hmm. have as much tape saturation because people are going digital, you know. Mm -hmm. This is what you'd want, you know. Interesting. I use this a lot for, I find I use it a lot on piano. I use it a lot on instruments that I want to compress, but I just want to let still kind of breathe and have the natural feel. Um, the Outlaw Plus is a great unit. In fact, Ross Hogarth helped design this unit with her. Um, it's just that this is, this is great to have. It's just two... It's either limiter, compressor, you know, you've got reduction and gain. And you just, it's so, it's, yeah, throw anything to it. It sounds cool. I mean, uh, mostly I, I really like it for bass or vocals or backing vocals. Thing, you know, because you can't, you can't change the uh, attack and release of it. But it's a great unit to have here. Uh, Transient Designer is incredible. Uh -huh, the SPL Transient, I mean, it's unreal on, on room mics, on... Whatever it is, it's just, uh, that's a really cool unit. In fact, actually, this is Simon Phillips uh, that he's lent to me for a little while to use, which is great. You so know. you're printing through this to type? Yes. Or, I mean, I've been mixing with it, too. That's I mean, I've been doing, I, in fact, the mix that we worked on today as one of my side chains, I've got all the drums going to it. And then I dial, nice. dialed it in just to kind of give it a little extra right. beef, you know. You're using on room mics to kind of bring out more kick and snare as opposed to cymbals? Yeah, kind of to dirty it up, dirty you know, kind of just give it to just almost like I'm using it like a compressor. I'm right. using it like something that just, you know, blow it out yeah. and then tickle that into the mix, you know. I've got a, I love retro. Uh, Phil's always, to me, makes great, great equipment. So this is a 176, which is, a, uh, it's a, you know, tube opto uh, compressor, but with attack and release time and side chain. Side chain, yeah. Um, and that's like my standard, standard vocal, um, especially mixing, maybe not always tracking, although lately I've been using it for tracking, but mixing is just incredible with vocals. It's great for a lot of things, but I know that I can hit that with anything and it sounds good. And it can, the needle can just go all the way, you know, and it still sounds great. Um, Wonderful. And then I've got uh, Phil's, uh, Retro's 2A3 stereo Pultec, which is cool because it's a, it's a, it's a Pultec, but it has, I think it actually has more selections, you know, frequency selections, I believe, I think. And it's fully rotary. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to, yeah, it's fully rotary, so mm -hmm. that's great. And I, uh, 
I use this all the time. I mean, I actually, I have been starting to use it a bit on my stereo bus, which is fun, but uh, only if it's left over. It gets used on vocals all the time. It gets Wonderful. used on bass all the time. I could go for another two or three of these units, honestly, you know. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Um, and then uh, the Massive Passive is great. Uh, I end up using this mostly on stereo bus, uh, um, but I have been using it lately on a couple other things, um, mostly... It, it's really good to dig into it adds a lot of tube so it's if you want to use if you want to add tube you know if you want to add right. tube sound like that will do it you know um this is a new addition this pair of bae 10 dc uh 10 dcf that's yep. the full number um compressor limiter uh these are great um you know i think it's supposed to kind of emulate like a neve 33609? I think so, know? from what I remember, yes. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I, I don't use it as much on my stereo bus, but I use it a lot on drum oxes. I mean, it sounds great on drum oxes. And actually, what I've also started using it on that I love is vocals. It has the, you know, it's, it, it gives that, sometimes when you want that, like, compressed... I've been using a lot of my hip hop artists, for instance. I wanted to have that thing that like, pushes it forward completely. Right. That does it. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Um, what is this? That's the Dizendorf uh, Tube Pre. Uh, I don't know it. Yeah, that's a uh, that's actually Ross Hogarth's. He lent that to me to use a bit. Beautiful preamp. Just beautiful one knob. You know, just uh, it uh, it sounds great. Uh, cool. Yeah, just a nice, pretty clean tube pre. And that's the top of an ATR 102. I was about to say, it looks like the top of an ATR 102. <laughs> yeah, this I, this is Phil uh, Retro, who uh, Phil who owns Retro. This is his. He had an idea to rack it up and have it so you could send you know mixes through. We'll see. I haven't been using it too much, but uh, that's a great idea. You gotta give it a try. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, more retro. I, more retro. The stay level was what really made me fall in love with retro. Um, great. The stay level, you know, modeled after the Gates stay level. <clears throat> I it's a, it's just every studio needs one or mm -hmm. six. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it's so good. It's good. It's I use it on bass. I use it on bass on the mix that we were looking at today. Right. I mean, vocals, bass, whatever it is. It's, you know, it's one of those units that whatever you put in comes out sounding better. Uh, it's not maybe something that you, I mean, I have been in sessions where I've used it on snare and things like that. It's maybe not something I would do, right. combat like, con like too much, but I've done it. And it sounds cool, you know. I suppose on a slower tempo, you're yeah, not going to have an issue. exactly. It's just a recovery time, maybe. Yeah. And then we've got a pair of 1176s. Sound great, you know, great just for anything, you know, end up using for guitars, lots of things like that, but it's great. Um, then the, this is the Dramastic Obsidian. This is one of my other standard stereo bus compressors. Um, it's like an SSL. I mean, it even looks like an SSL, uh, but it's designed in it. It sounds so much uh, it, uh, to me. It's a little more musical mm -hmm. sounding, and you have the. It has a built-in side chain, and I think the side chain is around one sixty or so. I don't actually remember. Typically, I that is kind of patched into my stereo bus all the time. Uh, it's very rare. I mean, I've I've even looked back and seen that it's on when I'm tracking, which is you know maybe foolish, but. It's, I mean, it really is something that's a staple for me. Um, this unit is a one-of-a-kind. Yeah, what is that? It's called a busboy. Ah, you know, right. Ross Hogarth gave me that as a birthday present when I was mixing the the third LP3 for Edward Sharp and My Next Zeros at, uh, at United Recording. So he showed up on the, because we were there mixing on my birthday, and he showed up and said, hey, maybe you want to use this. And, and I use it. Every time, every every time I mix, that that is one of my uh, standard drum sidechain compressors. Uh, it sounds great. Who Busboy? I've never Busboy. Even... Yeah, I, you know what? I I wish that I could remember who made it, and I'm sure answers I answers on a postcard, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to PO sure Box. Yeah, Ross. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you know Ross. You know he'll tell me, uh, but I just don't remember right now. And then the Eventide, uh, standard Eventide below, which I love. Yep. Yeah, it's really great. Love the H three thousands. Yeah, and uh, if space we space echo, space echo, the one on one. Yeah, stand. I mean, use that all the time. Uh, you know, I have my vinyl collection in the other room, so I gotta have my my turntable. 
Um, if we look behind the console, it's important for us to note the tape machine. You have to walk past Eric. Yeah, climb over. Everybody Eric. who watches knows Eric. He's more famous than anybody else. <laughs> My hair. And uh, this is a uh, Studer A27. Uh, I have to mention it because I use it almost every day. Um, yeah, you explained to me off camera how you patch. So give, give. Yeah, right. So this is a cool machine. I bought this machine from Jim James from, from My Morning Jacket, Jim. So uh, it's a great machine. It's, it works. It's a workhorse. Um, so what I do is I have I have 64 I.O. I'm pointing over here because that's where my <laughs> converters are. Yeah. Um, and so I record everything, like uh, everything's going to the API, and then I take it direct out from that and go into the Studer and then come out of the Studer back into Pro Tools to another set of 24 channels. So my sessions end up being all my everything off tape, 24 channels off tape, or however many there are, and then 24 channels, or however many they are, digital below it. Right. So then the artists monitor digital, so there's no delay. And then when I'm in here, I monitor what's coming off tape. Uh, if I need to do any punches or anything, I can just, by the click of a button, mute that and unmute the, the digital, and I can hear and I can, you know, uh, punch. And, uh, you know, I, it also is kind of cool because then you have, you always have both. Yep. And so it makes it makes this a creative tool. It's no longer really the platform that you're tracking on, but it's you know you let the tape go to the end and then you rewind it and do it over again and record over it. And so it, it it's really a creative tool to me. Um, so that's kind of how that's what it's become to me these days. That's great. Yeah. Um, and you keep a, the artist in the mentality of recording on tape, so they're not thinking yeah. you're going to fix it. They yeah, right. They have, they to, have to play well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. But the nice thing is that because it's dumping to Pro Tools simultaneously, you still have the speed of production that you have with digital. Because if you're doing an analog session, as we all know, the session's much slower. You know, you get much, you know, it's, which is nice sometimes because it allows things to breathe and allows, you right. know. Right. I do remember it, you know, when I first started tracking him. Yeah. Okay. Whew, give yeah. me a couple of seconds to get my breath back. <laughs> right, and but now it's like boom, boom, go, da -da, yeah. go, you know. So it's uh, but any you know, there's there's a lot of ways to do it. I've got a two track guitar, oh, a two track Atari on its way as well. So oh, I forgot this went down to seven and a half. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Wonderful. So this is the lounge. Uh, this is the. I mean, I bought this place in May, so it's developing. Um, this is the last part of the development so uh it's a great lounge uh, we've got a full kitchen uh which is great um and you make good coffee here they make great good coffee good, coffee, good <laughs> dinners you know my my assistant my CL makes great cuban food um and it's a great spot it's a great lounge um so for me uh -huh. I'm freaking out about these little Warfordels. Yeah, there. Oh, these you so and Simon cute. Phillips. Simon loves those. Yeah, yeah I, this is my childhood here. Really? That's yeah. so. I gotta hook those up. Yeah. I have, yeah, I was gonna put the turntable and whole system out here, but we're uh, it's changing a bit. So we're yeah, I'm gonna build a bar top here. Uh, I mean, I don't know if any of this is important to put in it, but no, it, no, this is great. Know, people love this. Stuff. We're gonna. I'm gonna build a bar top here yep. so that when when clients and people are here, they can. Stand. I think it's cool to stand and have sure. a place for your laptop and stand and have a place for your drink when you step out of the studio or something. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I might keep the table here. This set table is actually was finished by Simon Phillips, which is cool. Um, and it's very useful. People sit down and eat together, you know. Yeah, we just did it. it we just great. did it. Uh, <laughs> the whole studio I have running through isolation transformers. So very clean power. There's two 5K transformers. So everything's going through those. Oh, uh, wow. Which, you know, is great for any studio to have, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, then in here we have our B room. This is the Studio B, uh, which I'm turning into a production room. Uh, we've got... Uh, you know, I've got Pro Tools. We've got a desk in here. Uh, it's good for editing, good for writing. Uh, I've got a MIDI keyboard that we set up in here for someone to write with. I've got some of my vinyl here. And I have it set up, actually. 
uh, for high end vinyl transfer. So if people want to sample anything, you know, I just was trying to creatively it's think nice. about ways that you could utilize this in another room. The other cool thing though, is that behind the vinyl here is a tie lines to the control room. So the cool thing is that I can most I can put a bass amp or numerous guitar amps in here and mm -hmm. then they're out of the way. That's you great. know. So it just adds another element of isolation really. Lovely. And you, you got, got the mm -hmm. ref tones and the NS tens in here? Yeah, with the, there's a sub on the NS tens too. In fact, I think these NS tens are out of sunset sound. Um I believe so. I bought these from from Craig and everybody over there? Paul? No, I brought these from Techno Empire. Slevin? Slevin, who owns Techno Empire? It's right. like, uh, do you know Slevin? I don't know. No? But yeah. But I know anyway. the name Techno Empire. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then back here, just, uh, it's raining. Uh, it's a got, rainy day in Los Angeles. We have our parking lot and our little outdoor, you can, a little outdoor area that's developing right now. And Great. Yeah. It's a good spot. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Lenny, thank you ever thanks, so much. Thanks so much. I'm glad you guys came by. It was a lot of fun. It's been yeah. a really fun day. Totally. Me too. Yeah. We've been working on a, a, a course that you'll hear about later. So cool. we've had a whole day here. Yeah. It's been fun. Marvelous. Yeah. All right. And it's Infinite Spin. Infinite Spin Recorders. Yeah. Marvelous. There'll be a link flying around yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get the website up soon. We're working on it. We're working on our logo. Great. Uh, we have an Instagram up, you know, but we'll be around. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much. All right. Cool. Please leave a bunch of comments and questions below. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Goodbye.